Hello again. Now this is the culmination of uh, what we have been talking in this within the section of social entrepreneurship, sustainability, innovation and entrepreneurship and enabling the environment of innovation or let us say bringing in conducive conditions for innovation. So, here we are with how we can look at those things with the perspective of future market and innovation needs for India specifically. Where to start with? Uh, I was working in uh, the area of rural marketing uh, quite a few years back and uh, wrote a chapter uh, in the form of appendix in uh, uh, principles of a book called principles of marketing by uh, uh, Philip Kotler uh, and there in that chapter I tried to propose that rural markets have to be seen differently how differently uh, marketing is marketing efforts have to be made in terms of providing products at a precise place where customers need them we have to understand their needs and segment segment and target the customers accordingly and position the products accordingly and so on so it's it's a whole lot of a process why should we look at rural markets differently and then what is the context to that it's a debate but again the point is rural areas they have a different social fabric and and that has to be considered so, as I was also referring to uh, an aspect of culture uh, while propelling innovation and looking at uh, you know conducive environment for propelling innovations uh, for societal cause. So, here we are India has to be seen with the fabric India has as far as its social structure and future needs go that that fabric has to be understood with precisely the uh, you know even the element of uh, multi ethnicity or let us say diversity of cultures India has. So, those have to be considered, but again it is a difficult task for analyzing those things with relevance to as far as future market needs and innovation goes. And once we tend to universalize the products in terms of the needs of the customers and when, when then we try to uh, develop a coherence of the products and services with reference to whatever going is, uh, is whatever is going in global markets. We tend to lose the specific element which is required at our levels. I am um, not against any aspect of which is to uh, you know which product is to be introdu introduced and because it entirely depends upon the customers how well they receive a particular kind of a product. Uh, but we have to have a chord of you know how future has to be looked upon and with what kind of a perspective. Uh, should we look upon the future with reference to the needs and then what sort of needs? How do we categorize as far as needs of this country, our country India goes or should we look in terms of uh, future? Uh, with the perspective of available resources and how do we categorize those resources or how do we tend to divert those resources. So, it is it is a particular debate which has to take place in terms of how should we look at the future of our country. Now, briefly touching upon both the aspects if we look at the uh, levels of needs you would appreciate at the end of the day that needs have multi dimensionality. On one side we have to attend to as far as educational growth goes which I will address one by one later on, but just to categorize because until unless we look at that part future development definitely uh, would not happen so much. Then we have out of pocket expenses on health and health care has a huge demand and supply gap as far as this country goes which I have discussed in our earlier discussions as well. Then we have specific defense related needs and we uh, want to become self reliant as far as our defense equipment manufacturing and our forces to, to well equip our forces defense forces go. 
so that is that is an important need also then we have to have financial independence uh, wherein government is working uh, quite a bit as far as you know uh, for for universalizing tax norms and bringing in uh, advancements in tax norms and uh, you know uh, innovating upon the procedures and processes then uh, we have uh, other elements to be catered to and then uh, there are uh, so many things like sports also there there are uh, there there is a huge effort which has to be made and uh, which which is being made as far as uh, uh, manufacturing sector goes then there is service sector and so on so rational uh, uh, categorization of needs if we go we have lots of multidimensionality associated with such kind of needs but then again those needs have to be uh, categorized and catered to uh, for example as i suggest uh, suggested in the earlier discussions uh, that we urgently have to look at Ganges with the perspective of you know uh, cleaning the river goes uh, and for that even uh, if we have to pay a partial cost in terms of uh, you know industrialization besides the river uh, those, those steps are being taken uh, with with lots of zeal uh, now uh, and, and those those are uh, the, the life of the river is being prioritized against uh, those things so uh, needs have to be categorized that way but when needs they occur with a pressing kind of a demand that is a different kind of a situation but how to look at future needs that is where our uh, analysis lots of uh, intelligence and lots of coherence in the thought process and looking at the complete population with a, pos uh, with, with, uh, a potential and possibility uh, has to be uh, a method. So, then available resources, uh, we have to think in terms of our agricultural resources, we have to think in terms of our technological resources, we have to think in uh, terms of our natural resources and so on. So, uh, are we uh, going to exploit our resources or maintain our resources? For example, uh, you know coal uh, has been a major resource, but now it is depleting and we are thinking in terms of going for alternative measures and lot of be, lot of effort is being made in terms of solar energy and so on but because we are losing on coal that is why or uh, you know we uh, want to conserve that resource now. So, th that that has to be a call and then I would not categorically uh, comment upon uh, that kind of a thing be because it is beyond the domain of uh, the discussion of this subject, but ultimately we have to think in terms of future needs with, with the perspective of or future with the perspective of uh, you know available resources as such. Now, where stands innovation in this process? Innovation has an integrative role to play in everything. To start with, innovation has a role to play in categorization of needs as such also, uh, wherein we uh, you know look upon uh, let us say dissemination of education not with reference to uh, qualification or degrees or diplomas only but with utilization of that particular education for the development of the society. So, uh, and, and here comes in if we look at this process with the perspective of innovation we would realize that ultimately education has to be utilized for the development of uh, our economy, our country, our society. So, now uh, associating these elements we come up with innovative courses now we are hugely into uh, you know uh, open courses which can uh, which can be attended by several people from all walks of life and they can learn we now have uh, so much of support for school children who can learn from many sources and but but still we have to go uh, a long way now what and how should we think of as I said that uh, as I am as trying to build up the case as I said <coughs> that ultimately 
you know we should be thinking in terms of for example, should we categorize in terms of education, then housing, then energy and uh, then food security and disasters and defense. Should we take all these things together, how sh what should we do and uh, how should we take things up, what should we prioritize. So, there is lots of economic crunching which has to uh, go into this. But to start with what I have realized uh, as an academician as well as playing a particular role uh, with industry also that ultimately there are some fundamentals which have to be catered to uh, as far as India goes and those fundamentals are uh, uh, to be seen with the perspective of per capita energy uh, consumption for example. through uh, renewable resources and that is the uh, complete picture actually. If we say that uh, per capita energy consumption then the picture is half. We have to acknowledge that India must raise the levels of per capita energy consumption with the help of renewable resources and that makes the picture complete because renewable resources are uh, definitely going to be uh, supportive for as far as sustainability of our future generation goes. India has a long way to go for as far as the smart city element or let us say making the lives of people wonderful uh, in terms of developing new cities and uh, rejuvenating existing cities and uh, rejuvenating the rural areas with lots of amenities and support. So, that can be done with the help of uh, modern short and uh, long distance transportation uh, as such which will ease the weight of uh, uh, population on uh, bigger cities and then in the meanwhile uh, the smart city element or let us say rejuvenating the city element would be flown in and then subsequently some uh, you know. Uh, other cities or supportive cities would be developed and so on. This has to go uh, in a very larger way as far as uh, the whole scenario goes. So, development of uh, public transport, high speed public transport with uh, lots of innovation in the present transportation system as well as infrastructure has to uh, come up wherein people from uh, distances of 3 to 400 kilometers can move fast within a time span of uh, 2 hours to reach to the destinations and uh, so, so uh, you know uh, some uh, urban aspect should be spread off in due course of time. And while looking at energy needs and renewable energy needs uh, it has to be pra parallelly coupled up with the development of not only energy entrepreneurs from all walks of life. As I mentioned earlier also uh, people are people are working on uh, uh, printable solar cells, up and down motion of the sea waves, geothermal energy and several other sugar and yeast uh, to come up with uh, you know uh, a form of fuel and so many other efforts are now commercially viable. Uh, but unfortunately, I have not heard of such kind of efforts being made for commercial usage in India. Although uh, waste utilization, uh, utilization for energy development or uh, energy generation is uh, now a big reality. As I mentioned earlier also rice husk is being utilized and other waste material is also being utilized for energy generation and some efforts uh, we are also making in terms of forest bio residue and so on. So, but uh, not, not structured efforts are being made for as far. So, entrepreneurial and innovative concentration has to be made in that direction number one and then other industrial efforts or uh, other manufacturing efforts or other value uh, other efforts in whole of the value chain and supply chain has to be associated with such kind of energy development efforts or energy generation efforts. Uh, so, that complete scenario gets woven into one single uh, large picture. Then comes in education sector as I said Agastya foundation is playing a particular role. Veena Vadini school which I demonstrated uh, 
uh, with several contexts uh, and, and sometimes I wonder that why MB dexterity which was uh, utilized by Veena Vadini to propel charm towards education for poor children to divert their attention from alcoholism towards better role in the society. Uh, why this kind of effort is not being propelled by other schools? Uh, I have not witnessed at all any such kind of an effort being made for uh, enhancing the capacity and charm of children towards such kind of effort. Uh, although, although uh, on the uh, other side, I have witnessed that school children are being now, uh, you know taken towards more sort of a specialization with lots of pressing need to appear for uh, competitive examinations, so that they can enter into big universities and colleges and to focus uh, more upon specialization. And once uh, they go for that, there also they are pushed for a larger specific specialization uh, in, in their four years of study or so. so uh, and, and so much so that they argue upon that uh, they have a very specific thought process to be associated with their future, which is not good at all as far as you know, uh, when, when we think in terms of uh, uh, the larger role which people have to play in terms of, I am not again specialization, but again the point is that education has to be broadened up till a certain limit and then specialization has to be brought in at the stage of masters or so. Uh, for uh, we, we have been eager to rope in uh, people uh, in, in uh, you know uh, economic process at an early stage after their bachelor's degree uh, and we required that kind of uh, workflow, uh, workforce influx also. But uh, uh, we, we need not to go for uh, excessive push on specialization with that workforce requirement at that stage particularly, we must categorically suggest the students that they have to have a uh, wide context of whatever they are learning in terms of that is one part. The other part is that uh, they must have an idea of that what kind of role they would be playing in what part of their lives and how would they be supporting that role with further enhancement in their capacities and knowledge and from where they would be enhancing that capacity and uh, their uh, that kind of a capability. And then how would they further propel or let us say support uh, the people who are coming from behind. Everyone knows that there is a huge shortage of uh, teachers at school level and uh, uh, quality of teachers also is questionable, uh, which, which is being catered to by several kinds of agencies including government and uh, several other organizations. But what kind of a role individuals are uh, playing. There, there was a movement or, or let us say an effort made by a newspaper uh, called Teach India. So, that is these kind of efforts are being definitely made and individuals are playing specific roles uh, in th that kind of uh, those kind of efforts, but those kind of efforts are to be made in more structured kind of a fashion, wherein uh, in, uh, you know education has to be catered to with lots of innovation and uh, perspective and India needs that kind of an impetus as far as its education system goes and the quality of uh, output which is required for uh, future needs of India. Then comes in food security and that is a very big issue. Food security has to be uh, catered to through two, three dimensions. One is further growth as far as our uh, you know food grains go and uh, further uh, cultivable land and further techniques, uh, techniques in cultivation, further output which is required in terms of quantum of uh, cultivation or let us say quantum of food grains which are, uh, which, uh, are uh, produced uh, and that is catered to by scientific uh, uh, inputs also that is catered to by uh, several other uh, uh, you know uh, inputs uh, which are uh, given uh, uh, by the people who are associated with this uh, uh, field 
uh, farmers and uh, microfinance industry or let us say banking industry is also trying to play a particular kind of a role. Government is definitely playing a very, very large role in this and, and uh, things are going on well. Uh, but again, the other element is that how to rationally utilize food, how to uh, you know nutritionally utilize food for people who have less access to food as far as uh, their uh, you know everyone's food requirement goes and how to reduce the waste as far as food goes how to uh, uh, use uh, the unused food for uh, people to reach them in time before it gets depleted so those kind of uh, things are to be addressed and that too very very structurally as far as innovation perspective goes the other important element is disasters. Now, uh, as I referred to uh, you know few of the events which occurred earlier, uh, here I wish to draw uh, an important attention from uh, your side that there are several categories of disasters. One category is which is beyond our control, so we cannot do much about it, but uh, definitely we can think in terms of that how we can averse those uh, you know uh, we can avoid those disasters in future if somehow we can uh, intervene scientifically with the processes. But we very well understand that what kind of a situation we are going through uh, or, or we are developing in terms of generating several disasters go. For example, we are uh, interfering a lot as far as rivers go, we are interfering a uh, lot as far as our urban planning and structures go, we have been uh, interfering with the hills uh, and the mountain areas, where we have been cutting down trees like anything basically. We have sort of created policy frameworks and the intention was good which had to be a guide for us that how we can work within that certain framework. But Instead of taking those policy frameworks as guides, we have taken those policy frameworks as thresholds and we everyone, every organization, every individual tends to play just under that threshold uh, and the cumulative effect as far as uh, generating the causes for future disasters is very, very high. For example, we say that these kind of dams have to be constructed. So, we play with the norms and uh, that suggests that we are going by the rules, but we very well understand that if so many people would play uh, with those norms within that threshold limit, the cumulative effect would be disastrous. So, that has to be uh, seen and that has to be understood and so many avoidable disasters uh, you know uh, they, they occur, they happen and we can avoid those disasters. Uh, for example, Kashmir floods, uh, they brought in huge effect as far as the economy of that place goes and uh, the, the quantum is very, very high. Uh, uh, we wrote a paper uh, and presented that paper in Human Development Capability Association conference in Japan uh, in 2017 and uh, uh, the point is uh, sorry 2016 and the point is uh, that uh, you know the, in that that paper justifiably suggests that what kind of a depleting effect the Kashmir floods brought in and how uh, those floods or such kind of floods can be avoided if a long term perspective can be seen and witnessed. Uh, now then comes in for example, defence sector. India is focusing quite a bit on as far as their defense capability goes uh, by manufacturing defense equipment which is required. Uh, we have been a defense importer up till now, now we tend to become defense equipment exporter also. But to what extent uh, we should go about it that is uh, an important thing. Uh, this is a sensitive issue, we cannot say that hair draws the line because so many things depend upon uh, depends upon uh, how other countries would think of our freedom and uh, our uh, you know defense uh, goes, how they uh, look upon themselves, how our mutual relations would develop in due course of time, but everyone understands that uh, ultimately earth has to be a peaceful place to uh, live. Uh, 
uh, and uh, for for that peace to be uh, you know kind of mutual understanding and relations are more important so but but definitely defense sector requires lot of impetus as far as this particular uh, future situation goes so but the question is that is it going to be all together or one by one and what can we get from the side of innovation the answer to this is that innovation has to be woven into the complete system and value chain and we have to visualize this complete system all together so on the one hand we have to visualize that india should be 100% educated and a larger portion of that education should be utilized for the societal development and cultural development reducing voluntary uh, unemployment as such and uh, making it a better place as far as our transportation systems go reducing the pollution goes and uh, then maintaining the uh, the the purity of the water and the rivers go and uh, maintaining the health of people go and so on so on the one side we have to focus on that then we have to focus on future energy needs which is a pressing need at this moment and then food security and averting the disaster and so uh, so on and then we we can think in terms of uh, you know uh, the categorization of our industries for producing future products first we should be focused uh, upon uh, the fundamental products which are to be uh, required for our uh, immediate future needs and then mid mid term future needs and then the long term future needs as such so this is where i rest the case as far as the future needs and uh, you know future needs in terms of market and innovation uh, with reference to india thank you